Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. I'm Savannah and this channel is all about my crafting journey, progress, whatever you want to call it. Um, I usually title these knitting um, podcasts just because it's majority knitting, um, but sometimes I show cross stitch. Um, today I have a little bit of punch needle and a big box of haul. I mean, it's not that big, but a box of haul. So yeah, welcome. Um, also, I have a ton of social media if you'd like to follow my journey as well, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Ravelry is where I post the most, but I have Ravelry and, well, no, Instagram. <laughs> I have Instagram. That's where I post the most, but I do have Ravelry, Facebook, and a website, a website. So most of those that I listed, um, Ravelry and Instagram are kind of like the personal stuff. But I do also have another Instagram for my shop because I also am an indie hand dyer, a yarn hand dyer. I dye yarn um, under the name So Libby Dyes Yarn. And that's a dot com um, if you want to... If you want to go check that out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, so I think that's most of my intro. I think so. I hear the kids running around, but uh, I think that's mostly my intro. Um, yeah, it's hard to remember what the heck to say every time, considering I don't say it the same way every time. <laughs> yeah so everything I talk about today will be linked down below um so you can find it in the description if you're watching this on a mobile device it would just be the little like tiny arrow off to the right hand side um under the video or where the title title is I believe that's where it's located so you would just click that and it'll open up the description um if you're on a computer it's just below the video and you won't be able to find it on the TV if you're watching it on the TV. It's just, that's how YouTube works, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you like this video um, and anything I talk about today, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like anything, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Um, YouTube does not mind either or. Uh, any interaction is good interaction. Comments, subscriptions you know, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, so yeah, um, if you're new, welcome. Don't mind the craziness that this lady is. Um, I'm very weird, very weird. Um, and if you're returning, welcome back. Thanks for joining this craziness. Um, um, as you can see, things have changed. So last week I finally got over to Sally's Beauty Supply and I got some hair dye. Um, I did do it split, middle, um, pink on one side, green on the other. Well, it's not pink. It's actually supposed to be purple. Um, see the plummy purple. Um, but the ends ended up turning pretty pink. Uh, but I did a half and half so that I could do this. If I wanted to, um, or I can split it down the middle and have two colors. It, you know, if I put it up in a pony, you know, I finally got around to taking care of this since my hair was really showing um, the roots. Oh, granted, my roots were probably like down to here by the time <laughs> I dyed this. Uh, I don't have a problem with all the gray that's in my hair, which I don't think you could actually tell in the video, but it's, I have a lot of gray and I'm not against that at all. Like that's my preferred hair color. I like, I love people who have silver hair or salt and pepper hair. Um, mine just wasn't good because my natural hair color was still more predominant and my natural hair color is not desirable for me um it's very bland and it is what it is so you know um i only dyed it just because i wanted something fun um, 
So I went to Sally's trying to find um, the brand Arctic Fox, but the Sally's I went to was almost completely out. They had like three colors maybe, and it was not the colors that I was looking for. Um, so I looked around at what other, what other dyes they had, and they had this one I'd never seen before. Anyways, so it was like a in a pouch with a screw top, kind of like a Capri Sun, but you know, Capri Suns don't have the screw top. It was different. I don't even know how to pronounce the name of this brand, but it was really nice. Um, it did get a little weird because I made sure to really saturate because half the time I get spots because I don't put enough dye or I don't have enough dye to put in my hair. Um, but this time I made sure like I, I went overboard. I could have probably saved like half of the bag of each color um, for touch-ups, but once you squirt it out, you can't put it back in, unfortunately. Um, so I really thoroughly saturated each side. And uh, after waiting about 25 minutes, it started to drip like water. It was, it got bad. Um, the tank top I have underneath it has a little green stain on it because <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I was like, what the heck? This is uh, weird. I've never had hair dye that pretty much turns into water and drips. But yeah, anyways, so on and so forth. <laughs> this is what I look like for now. We'll see how long this lasts. Um, you know, before it starts fading really well. I'm hoping that it fades, honestly, so that I don't have to worry about this color being in my hair forever okay let's go ahead and get into um i'm going to show this first just because this is here and it's a singleton and whatnot this is my punch needle so i showed this several several videos ago that i got this punch needle kit from joann's and how i was kind of struggling with it and not really liking it um so it was just sitting on my desk just sitting there i had not worked on it in forever and I'm just like whatever well at one point everything just ends up piled up on my desk and it gets frustrating and unmotivating and so I needed to clean it so I cleaned up my desk and then this and the box that all the supplies are in I'm just sitting there and I'm like you know what I really need to just get this done so I can get rid of all this extra bit and then hang this up on the wall so I picked it up I, I think it was just two different days. I picked it up and did some more. And I'm working on finishing this leaf up. And I did quite a bit, actually. So I just have these two little bits left on this one. And then the rest of this leaf. And it'll be done. So this is a DMC kit. Punch needle kit. It comes with everything you need except for the punch needle and a hoop. So this is... What I'm doing it does come with the fabric with this printed on there and then the instruction sheet thing tells you what color goes into what section it's really not that difficult um using the punch needle has gotten easier so now really the biggest um issue I'm having is that the pre-cut p pre pre-cut pre strands of yarn that they give you because this is yarn that they give you is just it's like this long maybe a little longer and I'm running out real fast before I even get like it's just I'm constantly having to rethread the um punch needle and that's just that's a huge pain in the butt um so yeah but I'm getting there a little bit um every so often just trying to get this out of out of space taking stuff okay so I finished something yesterday. I finished something big yesterday. I finished my Summer Sorrel by Wool and Pine. It's not blocked yet. Um, I finished this kind of like in the evening time. So I did not get it. I didn't want to wash and block it and then not be able to show you today. So this is pre-blocked. Um, all the ends are woven in. I just have not trimmed them yet. Um, but yeah, here it is. 
So the, um, all my ribbing curls inside and I'm assuming that's because this is a reverse stockinette sweater. It's really weird because even if I like, cause I knit this stock, like I knit it, I did not purl it. Um, I knit it inside out. Um, I guess if it was, I don't understand why it does this. Like, I guess it still kind of curls in the middle. It's just curling up. So yeah, that's, uh, but this is what the inside looks like if it was knit. Really nice fade. Really nice fade. Oh, I forgot to, I was going to weigh the, um, the rest of the yarn to let you know what I had left, but I forgot to do that. But here is the finished piece. And it's so funny, so I was knitting on this the other day and I thought about it and I'm like, this looks like a tree. You got the, you got the trunk of the tree and then this bit up here is like the under, the under the canopy type thing where it's, so it's darker, older leaves. And then at the very top you have your new fresh leaves that are reaching up towards the sun. How funny is that? I am a tree. So I didn't even try this on yesterday. Um, I can do it over this because it kind of looks good with a, well, that doesn't look good, but so like I said, it needs a blocking. So it hits right at, uh, oh, here's my belly button. So I think it'll grow a little bit, um, with blocking. Uh, the neck is not big at all, but that I think is because I am a tighter knitter. So doing the I-cord cast on, um, it wasn't too loose. And yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this to be blocked and see how this looks and how it drapes. For right now, it's, it's quite nice. Again, I'm wearing this over a shirt, so... <laughs> Yep. Okay. So I track on a spreadsheet on my computer. I track what I work on each day. So I have a spreadsheet. Maybe I can insert a, a small photo of it here. But this is my spreadsheet and I do it by month. I write down what I've worked on for that month or at least all my whips. All the things I have as whips I have listed. And then each day I um, mark what I worked on. I do have like them um, in like, you know, there's a special highlights. So if I use a certain key, um, it'll turn that color, you know, color so I can see. And then I have it all mapped out like for each day, like at the end, it's formulated to tell me how many days I've actually worked on that project. And then at the end of each month, I have like a whole yearly type tracker and I put <laughs> oh my god and I put um you know that I populate that information in I'm sure I could figure out how to make it do it automatically I just I haven't figured it out I'm using numbers like mac numbers um I'm not incredibly familiar like fully familiar with how to do formulations especially from one spreadsheet to the next um, not like, uh, Excel, but anyway, so I populate those monthly totals into this fuller yearly spreadsheet, and then I can see how much, how many days total a project, uh, took. This took me 18 days. Only 18 days. That's freaking crazy. It's, it's, see, I like to do the tracking because I like to see that bit. I like to be surprised at how quickly I can actually knit a project. That's crazy. 18 days to do this. Granted, I did do a full sleeve sweater in six days once. <laughs> but yeah, 18 days just to knit this guy up. So yeah, again, so this is going to get washed and blocked today. Um, probably after this video. 
I'll show you what I have left. I also need to empty out my bag now and it can be used for something else. All right, so this got stuck together. Okay, color number one. All these yarns are from Spectacular Yarns. Um, my friend Jen, she gifted these to me right before she moved away, which, Jen, I can't believe you did that to me. These are her, um, these were her advent colors. So this one is, let me get the things, because they don't really have names, so I couldn't memorize the names, but color number one, this was advent number 22. This is from her advent that she did last year. Advent number 22, the sock base is the twist sock. It's 80% superwash merino wool and 20% nylon. It is a two ply. It's really nice to work with. So I got a big chunk of this. Um, like I said, I still need to weigh, weigh these. Um, I should probably put this. I'm gonna need to figure out. <laughs> um, weigh that. The color number two was advent number 13. And this was all I had left. If you've watched previous videos, then you would have known the struggle that I had with the middle color of my sweater. And then the last color is Advent number nine. And it was this beautiful brown color. It was variegated brown. So this is all I have left of this one. It's a lot less than this one, but probably still a decent amount. It's probably 20, 30 grams. And this one's probably like 50, 60. We'll see when I weigh it. And then I'll um, reskein it and put it in my stash cube. Um, scraps, whatever you want to call it. Um, yep, sorry, I just I had this in there as well. This is by Modular Modular. It's just a little notions pouch. That was just in case I needed it. And then I have a little lavender sachet that I made. Oh, it still smells nice. But I like to keep in my project bags. Those are available on my website, the lavender sachet. Sash Sashays. <laughs> the sachets. Those are available on my website if you are interested in getting a couple. I use fresh lavender buds. Um, just 100% lavender buds. Um, they do stop smelling after a little bit, but all you really have to do is kind of crunch them together inside and it resmells. It's fantastic. All right, so that was the only finish. We'll go ahead and get into whips. Um, this whip, I think I did some progress on it. I don't even remember. It's the Hongdae shawl. So I show this like every week um, by Ashley Wemp. I'm finally on to section three, I think. Did I start into the chart? No, I didn't. All right, I'm right into the the last like mosaic chart. Yep, yep. So that's what I get to set up tomorrow. Sorry, this thing is getting big. So that's where I'm at. I finished, I finished this. It's easier to see down here because you can actually see the, the progress. <laughs> um, I finished this first part of section three now I have one of these to do on this side and then another repeat below that. So that's where I'm at on this. This marker is showing you where I was the last time I showed you. So yeah, I only got a couple rows done um, last Wednesday. Something, I don't know what I did last Wednesday, but I, I didn't have a lot of time to work on this, I guess. I can't remember what I did on Wednesday. Was that the day that I reorganized my... So I tried to make a video of myself reorganizing my yarn stash and purging yarn that I just was not going to use. And I was not able to. Um, issues with my phone, like running out of storage, not being able to upload what I did have so that I could clear my phone. I wasn't able to do any of that stuff. So I just had to scrap it. I couldn't like restart because I had already halfway gone through everything. But yep, I didn't have a lot of time, so I just finished up that that section. Well, well, yeah, I guess it's just called a section, even though it's in section three. Um, 
yeah yarns for this are my yarns let's see do i have the tags in here no i didn't put tags on mine <laughs> that's my yarn so libby dies yarn these are the um color of the month for 2021 this is january's and february's um they are based off of lore olympus characters so this blue one that's tangled this one's hades it was february's colorway and then january's colorway was based off of persephone i absolutely love this uh webtoon um, my other favorite one finally just came back. It's called Let's Play. Um, I really love that one too. Um, and those are the only two that I really care about on Webtoon, the Webtoon app, honestly. Um, but, yes. Hopefully soon. Not really. It probably won't happen anytime soon. But yeah. Um, let's get that out of the way. Next whip is a sock whip. It's actually a new start. So these two are new starts. New start. So January, January, <laughs> July started the other day. And so I needed to cast on my new socks for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. This is held by Lay Family F Yarn and So Sweet Violet. These are both both of these people have Ravelry groups for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, so you can find all the rules and stuff like that there. I have it linked down below so that you can find it easily. Um, So we're on January, and each month is a colored theme for socks. This month is blue. Um, So I cast on my socks. I'm using the, it's the Sweet Georgia's Party of Five. It's a mini skein yarn set. So these are my colors. Um, I did make a little goof up backwards. So the pattern that I'm using is the There and Back Again Socks by Dan uh, Don Catone, maybe. Um, so it's the There and Back Again, but I'm splitting and adding all five colors in to my socks instead of just doing the two color paint hey, orange. So I started these, and I like I said I goof. What I meant by I goofed up, I meant to put the, I meant to put these this color at the toe, and this would be at the cuff, like where my leg is, because I was afraid that this would kind of blend into my skin. But wasn't really paying attention. I had the blue, I had the blue out, and then when I got started on the pattern, um, I realized it was toe up. And I wasn't really like, I didn't like let it click that, hey, it's toe up. I should switch to the other color um, because I was more concerned about trying to figure out how to do the Judy's magic cast on. Uh, so I have a blue toe and foot. This is where I'm at. So these two colors are pretty subtle together. As you can see, you can't see the, um, you can barely see the uh, color work in there. Um, but I promise you, there's color work. Look at all those floats. It actually looks kind of nice, right? Um, so that's all I got on. I actually did all this on July 1st. Was that Wednesday? Is that why I didn't have a lot of time on my shawl? Because I was working on this, getting this cast on. Um, anyway, so this is just one day's work. Um knitting these on what are these these are chiagos what size okay so these are a us one 2.25 millimeter these are the nine inch circulars um i'm using these because it makes for doing the color work a little bit easier um i did have to start out with i did start out with two circular needles um like 16 inch circular needles to cast on the toe and do the increases because you can't do that on the on the nine inch circs and I kind of kept going with them into the color work a little bit but then it got just a little a little difficult with the floats um on either side and switching the needles and it was a bit much so I switched over to nine inch circs I'm also using these for the summer sock camp 
2021 uh, that the Crazy Sock Lady is hosting. And Sock Week is coming up really soon. So I'm debating if the second sock for this will be part of Sock Week or if I'll use one of my other sock uh, projects as a Sock Week entry. I don't know, but I'm going to work on this today. Everything's in my baby Yoda bag. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last cast on. You start. Um, I started this on July 4th. It is the Ice Cream Social Shawl by uh, Lisa Ross. Or Paper Craft. What is it? Paper Paper. Paper Daisy Creations. Paper Daisy, Daisy Creations. Um, so my local yarn store wanted to have a knit along and they chose this pattern as the knit along so it's ice cream social knit along anyways um, so i wanted to go to my local needleworks not needlework yarn store and cast this on with everyone but it being the fourth of july um and a sunday i had church and then church did a picnic afterwards and then after that i might have had time but honestly the weather turned and it was not a pretty afternoon, let's just say. Um, it downpoured and hailed in parts of town. It downpoured at my house. Um, I'm not going to drive if I don't have to. So I just started it at home. These are my... I don't want to... So the, I have everything set up right here in this little bucket. I have an extra pair of needles for when the ones I started with are too short. Um, but yeah, I'm on the second color already. Let me show you what I got. It's a little funky. Looks like a little thong, doesn't it? <laughs> Whoa. So that's where I'm at. So on July 4th, all I did was I did this one, I put this color in, and then I did this other stripe. And then yesterday, after I finished my sweater, I started in with the the yellow color, the mustard color. Um, but it was slow going just because my husband put on some more like track and field um, stuff. You know, like, I, it wasn't Olympic stuff. It was called the um, Wanda Diamond Event. Um, but it was almost like Olympic trials type thing, but not really. Anyways, it's always fun to watch that stuff. So that was distracting. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it is a very intense pattern, at least for my standards. Um, I really have to pay attention to what I'm doing. They do have charts in it, but I just find it easier to read the oh, excuse me, the written part. The written part, so I'm just doing that. That's only because it's super intense. If it wasn't as intense as it was, um, maybe I could read the charts easier, or at least follow along the charts easier, but so yeah. Like my new underwear. <laughs> just kidding. So now I'm using my start a smart stick. I haven't used these in forever, so it was nice to pull these guys out. Oops. But as you can see, they're only 16 inches. It's not gonna be long enough soon, so I have another another needle ready to go. Yep, that is all that I have for whips right now. That I've I guess focused on these last few days. I didn't work on the other sweater at all because I was focusing on getting this one finished. Um, now that one can get... <sighs> that one can get focused on a little bit more. Um, so yeah, now I have a box of haul. This was the box that came the day of my video or the day after my video last week. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, I saved it all in here so I could show you. I do have more haul coming later today. 
but I won't be able to get it in this video and then more haul later on. We'll see. We'll see. So I'll go ahead and show you. This is all from, I believe this is just the nitpicks. I think that's all I have for haul. Um, yeah, this is all from the nitpicks sale when they did the fingering weight sale. Um, cause they've been breaking it down. This week is sport and DK. Um, which I'm a little bummed about because I decided to do no spend July. I'm going to try real hard not to spend any money this month. Um, and then this week is the DK and sport weight sale. I could use more DK, DK and sport weight yarn in my stash for things, but it is what it is and it'll be okay. So, um, I, purchased some yarn and some extras just because it was a really good deal. I got, so they had these, these clear bags. Aurora's being weird. They had these clear bags and they were like deep, deeply discounted. So I got two of them. I got, this one is the small, I believe, which to me, this is more like a medium. O according to like like sewn project bags like <laughs> this feels more like a medium to me compared to those but this is the small and it's just clear vinyl um box bottom bag I just thought it'd be fun to have some extra bags and then I got the medium one but look at how big this thing is this thing is huge let's put a whole sweater in there um, yeah, so I got these two and I decided to get these, these stitch markers cause I thought they were super cute. So I'll take these out of the package. I haven't got to use any of these, so I wanted to save them for the video. Um, but I got these from Knit Picks. They're crystals. So you got a blue one, a purple, a blue one, a purple one orange one a pink one and a green one they're rock cut crystals it's not gonna focus it never focuses i might change the um the little doohickeys to be something else instead of on the light bulb stitch markers but this is how they came those are so cute so now i get to use them finally all right and lastly is the yarn so i got this one, it's called, it's the Static Fingering Weight. It is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is called Beekeeper. I've never used this static yarn by Knit Picks, but it feels like, like most other fingering weight yarns. Um, so... I don't think it'll be an issue. It's 437 yards or 100 grams. So I'm not entirely sure. I think this is supposed to kind of do like a self-striping fade-esque type deal. I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was in one of the nitpicks catalogs I got, like the recent one. I think and that's why I was looking at these. So they got that one, and then I, I decided to get, this is Stroll Fingering Weight, and it's called the Prink, Prickly Pear Gradient. Look at how pretty that is. Um, so this one is also a 75-25% um, blend, superwash blend. This one's 458 yards, though. So I got this, and I was looking at it when it, it arrived, and then I was like, Wait, how do I do two socks? <laughs> how do I do two socks? Um, you know, I, like, yeah, it'd take a little extra work if I wanted to. Um, but I don't know. I might end up just, you know, knitting straight from this and then having two different socks. But uh, I didn't think about that until I did receive it. And I'm like, I can't... Like, I could separate these, but then it's not going to be, like, a real fade. So, <laughs> yeah, that's fun, right? I didn't think about that. They should put these in, like, two cakes. 
For 458 yards for 100 grams, you should just put these in two cakes instead of having to buy two cakes because this is more than I need for a sock. And then lastly, I got a sweater's quantity of pallet yarn. Um, so I'm going to insert a picture. I've seen this sweater. I found this sweater on Ravelry months ago. And I really like it. Um, like a lot. The only issue I'm ha I had with it, um, cause I don't own, wait, no, I do own the pattern. Do I own it? I don't remember if I purchased it yet. Um, the only issue that I really have with the pattern is that there's not very many projects done with it. And one of the projects does have, um, notes and they said that they, it's, so it's a bottom up sweater. They got to the top and it's way too tight and it doesn't fit them. So that's a little concerning for me. Um, just, you know, those two things, one person said it was too small and then another person, or, and then the fact that it only has like a handful of actual people who worked on it. Nobody else has any project notes. So, or, or ones that even really like talk about anything. So I'm a little concerned, but I did decide to buy the yarn for it since it was on sale. Um, and I probably will knit it up sometime and, and hope that it goes, you know, well for me. I'll make sure to add a little bit of positive ease. I don't know if it already has it worked in or not, but we will see. So the, the pattern, it's called Monstera. I forget who the designer is. Sorry, I have an itchy eye. Um, and yeah, so I picked yarn for it. So for the main body, I got this color called Bittersweet Heather. And this is the, like I said, palette fingering weight. It's 231 yards per 50 grams. And this is, um, <clears throat> it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I've used this for another sweater that I have in my stash, like, a sweater that I've already knit and worn several times. And I really, really love this yarn. Like wearing this yarn is really nice. So this is the color. I did struggle on trying to f pick the main color for the sweater. Um, I wanted it to be just the right, like brown. And I think this one was the closest to what I wanted. So yeah, it's called Bittersweet Heather. For the outline of the leaves, um, as you can see, the leaves were kind of outlined. Um, I chose this one. And this was the first color I went to when I was looking through. I'm like, I need to have this color. So it's called Caper. <clears throat> and it's this beautiful, like, olive green. Kind of more of a, a yellowy green. It's really nice. <clears throat> so that's the outline. <clears throat> and to fill in the... Oops, to fill in the leaves um, along the yoke, um, I chose Lark. Not Lark, this is Larch, Heather, L-A-R-C-H. It's a deeper, it's like the green I'm wearing, kind of a really nice green. So body, outline, oops, let's get these so that you can get the color, and then fill in. I thought those would work really well together. So now I can actually put them up there. But um, again, I'm not sure when I will. God, these are colors. When I'll get this started. Um, obviously, it's not a priority because I have other obligations. But I got a whole. As you can see, I got a whole. <laughs> box full. <clears throat> yeah I wish I could just told you how much um each thing was while it was on sale but they never put the they never put the price of the item on their little uh packing slip so so yeah that is my oh, sorry that is my haul for today or for the video I should say because I have more haul coming today. What is coming today? Something by Rose Hill Yarns, I think. I bought a sock set. It was Jen's fault. 
just kidding. Uh, she showed me some beautiful yarn and I couldn't resist and I got it immediately. Um, okay. So that's really it. That's really it guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this blocked. Um, oh, I started dyeing, um, the advents. So I'm doing, I'm doing advents this year. I thought I would try for my shop. Um, and I actually started dyeing up a couple colors last week. And so I'm going to continue on hopefully today, do some, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm excited. So yeah, block this, maybe dye a little bit more yarn, um, work on my rainbow sock, cro uh, chronicle socks, see how far I can get and put all this haul away since I don't need it in a box anymore. Um, and that's it guys. That's really it. Not much. I mean, 4th of July. What do you want to know? Um, we just hung out at home. The rain did stop eventually. And we, we had, they did a, a show in our neighborhood again, which was really nice. So all we had to do was walk to the end of our street and watch the fireworks. But we also had fireworks everywhere else. Like, so in Colorado, um, within the city of Colorado Springs, it is illegal to light fireworks. And I think it's crazy too, because there are tents places target sells fireworks walmart sells fireworks um but we're not supposed to have like fireworks that leave the ground or anything like that um i don't even think sparklers are really allowed either way um there was a neighbor's um two streets down from us and then one and then another neighbor <laughs> one street um, in front of us, they had, uh, the big kind you shoot in the air and they explode. So we had fireworks everywhere. It was, it was fun to be able to watch everybody's. Um, we did have neighbors down at the end of our cul-de-sac who had like the kind that you just leave them on the ground and they just kind of sparkle up. That's about all they had. Um, but it was, uh, the, <laughs> the fireworks were crazy. Um, and that was it. You know, we didn't do anything special, which it was nice and chill. <laughs> nice and chill. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I'll see you next third. What? Tuesday. I'll see you next Tuesday in another update video. Bye. Okay. So I forgot something before I ended the video. Um, and maybe because I don't like talking about this part, but, um, I do have, um, I do have a buy me a coffee account. Is that what it is? Yeah. Not the Ko-Fi one. I have a buy me a coffee account. So I've had it for a while. Um, and it's been listed down below and I get it. It's not something that is like necessary. Um, <laughs> But I know I haven't mentioned it, so I don't know how many people actually do look down in the description box. Um, but it's there. Um, I'm going to reconfigure configure it, I guess. Um, so I found... What is it called? <clears throat> you know, the sock knitting machines. If you're unaware, sock knitting machine is this really cool contraption that you can crank... Um, you can put your yarn in it and you crank it and it knits you a tube, um, a sock tube. And then all you have to do is knit heels, toes, and cuffs. So, um, I would really like to get one of those, um, because, uh, I've been act asked a lot, um, lately if I ever knit to sell my items specifically socks. Um, and I, I don't obviously, uh, I only have so much time in my life to knit a pair of socks for myself, um, let alone for other people. And so I thought that maybe next year I can focus on knitting socks and putting them on my website for anybody who would like to purchase socks. Granted, I know knitting socks is kind of, um, 
they're very uh, customizable to a person's foot and that it's difficult um, to knit for other people when you don't know their size foot. But I think that if I can just knit or crank a tube that's like a standard size and um, add in heels, toes, and cuffs, uh, that, you know, it's not, it's not a custom order. It's just you can choose to purchase those if you want to. Um, I can always leave off heels. Um, so it's more of just a tube sock in case someone wants something like that. Um, so my goal for the rest of this year, I guess, is to save up enough money to buy one of these machines. Um, I did find somebody who has, who makes 3D printed ones. So they're a little bit more affordable. Um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to see what the, the other ones that, the Elbacher, I can't remember um see how much those ones cost too but I did find one 3d printed ones that were a decent price so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconfigure that um that buy me a coffee page to um if you would like to donate a dollar a couple dollars towards that that's what it'll go to that way I can produce socks um, or even just a service to make tubes um, for those who like to knit or like knit socks and know how to do heels, toes, and cuffs. They can just get a tube of my yarn um, made kind of thing. You know, that could be a, a um, an option. I could, you could buy some yarn and I can um, crank it into a tube. I could make tubes that people just buy without having to buy the yarn. Um... Yeah, I have all these ideas in my head, specifically for next year, um, just because I'm sure it'll take me a while to save up enough money to to get this machine. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's where I'm thinking I'm going to go with the business. Um, and if you would like to help with that in any way, that's down in the description, um, just so you are aware no obligations whatsoever. Um, I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, also, also, um, so, um, I'm also thinking about designing a couple decals, um, for the shop that you could buy. Um, so a lot of people don't know, but several years ago, my family purchased, um, what do you want to call it? They got me a, a really nice silhouette machine, you know, a decal cutting, vinyl cutting machine. Um, I also have a heat press, but I don't think I'll be doing shirts anytime soon. Um, that's mostly just for me now. Um, but I made a knitting decal for my car. Um, and I thought it was super cute. So I thought I could maybe come up with just a handful of designs and put them on my website. So I think that might be coming within the next couple of weeks. Um, it's just finding the time to design and coming up with the ideas kind of thing. So there'll be knitting, crochet. Um, I did have someone ask for a couple of cross stitch ones, so that might come up too. Um, any requests for like anything else, you know, maybe there'll be a custom order type section listing. Um, too as well um we'll see um I don't want to bite off more than I can chew like I did when I originally tried to do a vinyl decal business um I think I want to keep it mostly just uh standard stuff and not very many custom orders uh custom can get kind of tricky only with the fact that I'm limited. I want to keep it limited. So especially with like colors and like detail kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I forgot to mention this stuff before. Now we can go about our day and have a fantastic week. Bye. Bye.